Hey folks, welcome to G4G on YouTube. The second video that we're doing here in the new year. And wanted to go ahead and do one that had been requested of me around the turn of the year. A couple people that had been watching the 2019 or the decade wrap up video in terms of gaming and everything. were like, hey, what are you looking forward to in 2020? So I've sat down and thought about this list for a little while, both gaming and gaming related items and wanted to do a video on that. For those who are Marvel Avengers Alliance Redux fans, there has been uh, the case where the lead dev has taken down the beta 1 and the beta 2 patches from his mega because he was cleaning it up in prep for the next beta to get uploaded hopefully very soon. So we're thinking maybe this week or next week we will have a new beta for Marvel Avengers Alliance Redux. And of course, that will be one of the things that we will discuss here in this particular video. So you see me currently on the Razor page, and that is because I'm going to start off with a little bit of tech before I get into the gaming. So Razor was at CEC or CES and debuted a couple of things over here that I think are interesting. One of the things is this Razer Kishi, which is basically a shell that you can insert a phone into and it gives you sort of a switch-like set of controls um, around the phone. This could be an interesting device if they take into account a modular plug and everything. Um, see, it says here that it's not going to be Bluetooth. It's going to connect directly to the device's charging point. That means to me, on this right edge over here where the phone is likely going to have its power port, they should really make sure that it ends in a proprietary plug that you can either adapt to lightning, micro USB for the Android phones, or USB-C. They should also ensure that at least for the micro USB one, that they make it so that it will go in in either direction. So micro USB can't be flipped. There is the smaller side, which is smooth, and the bigger side, which has the two bumps. They need to ensure that they make it so that when you plug in that adapter for the micro USB, it can either plug in with the bumps up or down because Samsung phones will face you on the smooth side, but there are some other Android phones that have the bigger side or the side with the two little bumps facing you. So, uh, could be interesting tech. I hope they do it right. Now, how this compares to the Razer Jungle Cat, which I'll show you guys real quick over here. I'm not exactly too sure. Uh, they had announced the Razer Jungle Cat just a little bit ago, and now they're talking about this Razer Kishi, so I, I don't exactly know what they're going for for having two very similar products on the market. I think the Jungle Cat may only be available for some of the Razer phones, and maybe not expanded for other phones quite yet. So, uh, yeah, I'm not really too sure of the comparison between the Kishi and the Jungle Cat as of yet. This, which looks like an external Razer uh, video card unit that, you know, some people will do for laptops to give them high performance. This isn't actually a, a box for video cards. This is a Razer NUC. So if you're not familiar with what a NUC is, it's basically a uh, Intel's next unit of computing or very, very small form factor computers. This is actually a desktop, not an external graphics housing. It's an all-in-one desktop that's going to be up to an Intel 9th Gen i9-9980 8-core processor, which is very similar to the one I have, and a GeForce RTX 20 series graphics card in there. Again, similar to the one I have, I don't know how the prices will be and whether or not it will feature Razer's Chroma related things. Um, but this also could be interesting if the price point is good. And I bet what may happen is that the first versions 
might come out without chroma and then once it starts hitting the market you'll see them adding chroma too and everybody will be like damn you may want to wait on this even if it comes out as a good price i don't necessarily know that i would jump on it right as it comes out if you are a heavy land traveler which these are no longer the days of fatality i don't know how many people are visiting lands with their gaming rig anymore um but this could be certainly very interesting now the one tech that i want to talk about before we get into the gaming is the google stadia this thing is basically this is a this is a herpes gift the google stadia it is the gift that keeps on giving inside of a raging tire fire things are not going good for the stadia right now I would like to see it succeed because I would hate for people who buy into it to see their stuff go into the Google Graveyard, which is a very known thing. The Google Graveyard was even present within Google at one of their Halloweens. So even they talk about it internally, which is in a way really sad. But the Google Stadia, I sort of hope it fails so that they build it the right way. And it teaches Google not to treat the public like a beta test. What I would like to see happen to the Stadia in 2020 is that they go to a Netflix subscription that maybe has either one, well not one tier, but two or three tiers max. So they could have it where games of X level are on their subscription. And then if you want a premium game like a Borderlands 3, a Destiny 2, a Red Dead Redemption, you you pay for that game. But you have a base level of games that you get for $10 a month, $9.99 a month or something. And then you have a tier or two up from that where I can't imagine, it might be tough to get three tiers, but maybe at least two where there's like the $10 a month tier where you get everything but you have to buy the premium games and then there's maybe a 13 to 15 tier a month where you get all the premium games similar to what you've got going with the xbox and the x cloud streaming and all that it's the smartest way for google to go it will increase their market share i think right now who really is going to get stadia because stadia will be about as disappointing as when you give somebody a chromebook and they're like oh yeah i've got a laptop now and it doesn't really do anything okay i can i can watch youtube but can i get office on here can i play some games what uh, that's kind of what stadia is positioned to be it's cheaper than a computer and cheaper than a console but its limitations are incredibly apparent and it's not doing well it's not doing the 4k the way it's supposed to uh, i think even destiny 2 has had some issues on the stadia it's it's not good it, it's it's half baked as of right now and there's a lot of things google can do to fix it i just don't know if they actually will so on to the game so before i compiled this list i was uh I was checking with the girlfriend to see what she was looking forward to as a spark to remind me of things that we may have seen in some of the past presentations and uh, she did come up with a couple things that I had forgotten about. So one of the things is Ghostwire Tokyo. So Ghostwire Tokyo is basically um, this game where when I we saw the footage at e3 and everything is is a person kind of wakes up and is in this form of tokyo where people are possessed and um they're not quite themselves so this one's going to be very interesting uh, i don't know how spoopy it's going to go for or we don't really know that much about the game quite yet but Ghostwire Tokyo could definitely be something that is quite interesting. If you are a Soulsborne kind of player, Elden Ring is another one that is definitely on my watch list. Uh, it is from 
Uh, it's going to be published from Bandai Namco. This is the one that is that Game of Thrones joint venture over here. As you can see, one of the writers is George R. 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 Martin. So this one will be very interesting. And apparently, according to the news, it'll be at the Taipei Game Show next month. This has a, uh, a good indication of being a very good Soulsborne style game. The FF7 remake, that is one of the things I'm looking forward to. And the cool thing is um, we don't have to wait that long for that one to show up. The first installation is coming as early as March, which to me blows my mind that it's going to be that quick. It's one of those ones that you kept expecting to wait forever and forever. And for it to jump up to the... Uh, early spring over here that's going to be fantastic i'm not going to be one of those fanboys that's going to live and die by this because as much as i loved seven and uh seven along with a playstation one was a really nice gift i got way back in the uh the middle 90s and everything i would definitely put final fantasy 6 and even final fantasy 10 up there as some of my favorite Final Fantasy games. So 7 does not exclusively have a lock on my favorite Final Fantasy 7 game. But when this comes out, uh, definitely going to get it. Really interested in grabbing that one when it pops out. The episodic nature of it, it remains to be seen. We had a deal with that with StarCraft 2, where we had Wings of Liberty, and then we had the Zerg one, and then we had the Protoss one seemingly the public got over it so i don't know if we'll get charged for it if there'll be free dlcs and everything like that but it, it's it's going to be interesting the the graphics of course look phenomenal watching that trailer at the e3 several years ago and, and i was like is that midgard is that what Wait a minute, that's, that's Cloud's arm, isn't Oh my god, that's a buster sword, and it was just shitting my pants, the rest of it. So, that, by the way, is, is definitely one of my favorite all-time trailers, is that Final Fantasy VII one, because it seemed to come out of nowhere, and um, that was fun. Here's a off one for you guys. Let's see if I can pull it up this way. Yep, so, Dark Crystal that movie from when you were a kid and is now apparently back on Netflix which I, I do want to see I haven't gotten around to it yet but the the infamous Skeksis which definitely may have gone into the Arakoa of World of Warcraft's uh, The Burning Crusade and everything Dark Crystal Age of Resistance is going to be a tactics game that is going to be coming out this year uh, it says the original well, no, that's a Netflix. Okay. So, yeah, there's going to be a tactics game that is based off of the new Dark Crystal series. And that could be interesting. I mean, if you're a Final Fantasy tactics person or tactics ogre, things like that, you may find this to be fun. It looks like it's going to be on the Switch I and Steam also. I don't necessarily know that I can dip into such slow games as a tactics one anymore because sometimes tactic ones do get kind of frustrating in their speed but you know I played Final Fantasy Tactics all the way through and then again when it popped up on the PSP so maybe I'd still have it in me. Diablo 4 that's another one that I'm definitely looking forward to in 2020 that that trailer video at blizzcon was amazing however we probably are not going to get this in uh 2020 they're saying maybe even as late as 2022 so we'll pass right by that but that lilith intro was absolutely amazing that is one of my favorite all-time trailers along with the final fantasy one and we still got another trailer we're going to talk about in this video one that we're not going to talk about was that trailer for battlefield uh battle for azeroth 
from World of Warcraft at the BlizzCon that that one showed up in because when Sylvanas did that banshee scream and yelled for the horde, one of my favorite all-time game trailer moments. But that one's not in this video. Overwatch 2, while we're on the... Uh, while we're on the Blizzard train over here, Overwatch 2 is something that I'm definitely looking forward to. Still remains very up in the air what it's going to be like. It's, it's probably going to be very heavily rooted in PvE. But we do know from kind of what they said at BlizzCon that you'll be able to hop back and forth with its compatibility with um, Overwatch 1 and everything. So... It could be that at least buying it doesn't simply negate the fact that you bought Overwatch. You, you should just overlay right on top of it and allow you to continue to play with Overwatch people and everything. Um, Shadowlands, again, continuing with the Blizzard stuff. Shadowlands, definitely looking forward to this. Um, Battle for Azeroth has gotten really long in the tooth right now. And it's surely considered a bad expansion. To me, Mists of Pandaria was an awful expansion for me, but not necessarily publicly. However, it was followed up immediately with Warlords of Draenor, which is considered publicly a terrible expansion pack. Well, Battlefield for Azeroth, despite its glorious trailer a couple of years ago, has kind of devolved into that Warlords of Draenor level of bad. So we are now looking forward to the horizon. We have the new raid tier dropping January 14th, which will be cool. But Shadowlands, and for me, hopefully getting into the Shadowlands beta, that'll be really interested. I know that for the girlfriend, who is way more down on Biffa than I am, uh, mostly because being a guild leader, I... I sort of have to be the cheerleader of it, but I'm just about done too. She's definitely mentioned that she's looking forward to Shadowlands and hope that it reinvigorates WoW for her. For me, it's easier for WoW to get reinvigorated because I can't be that depressed about an expansion pack because then it bleeds into the guild that I lead and the raid that I lead, but uh, Shadowlands, I think... With the fact that they've had a good expansion in Legion and then a bad expansion in Biffa, they may be able to learn from the two and weed out all the dregs for Shadowlands. So that'll be interesting. Uh, Fantasy Star Online 2 and Lost Ark. These are two, I mentioned them in the same breath because these are two things that have been around for a long, long time. And the West have patiently stood there with their hands folded together and twiddled their thumbs with the ability to play this legitimately here in the West. You can go and play PSO2 on the Japan servers and you kind of get lucky as an American because you largely play during their night when they're not playing as much. But apparently... They're quite xenophobic over there about Americans coming over and playing PSO2, and they don't really like it very much. So having an official PSO2 coming out would be great. I played PSO1 on the Dreamcast way back in the day, and I think it was even dial-up at the time. I wouldn't mind dipping my feet into PSO2 a little bit just to check it out, see how much it jibes with my memory of it uh girlfriend did have a friend that she was playing it with a couple of years back and you know it was one of those flash in the pan ones did for a little while didn't necessarily uh, stick with her but the ability to do it above the table and being able to publicly play the game and not have to kind of hide in the corner and hope whoa well, shit i hope they don't find out about me that i'm american that'll be really cool lost ark is a diablo style game that has made the rounds in korea and other eastern Bloc countries and everything like that however there's some mixed information here they're saying it's maybe not coming to the west in 2020 but other people have thought that it might so this is a really good open world diablo style game this is one 
that as potentially a free to play I would like to give it a try I've done Diablo 1, 2, and 3 I've done Grim Dawn I've done a, a little bit of Path of Exile and some others similar to this so I wouldn't mind giving Lost Ark a shot it's there is definitely a community of people in the West that are just waiting and waiting to play this without VPNs and connecting to Russian servers and a whole bunch of other crazy shit. After the Doom 2016 speedrun at Amazing Games Done Quick, that has reminded me that Doom Eternal is something that I am looking forward to. Doom 2016 was great. However, it was a little stodgy in its implementation where from somebody who played Doom 1 and Doom 2 and Ultimate Doom and Duke Nukem and Rise of the Triad and Shadow Warrior and Blood 1 and Blood 2 and countless other FPSs from the late 90s, even the 6-axis ones like Descent 1 and 2 and 3 and cheesy ones like Quarter 7, uh, Witchblade, or Witch Haven, excuse me, Witchblade was the show, Witchblade. Doom 2016's implementation of it was boringish corridor, a little bit of parkour, a little bit of secrets and stuff, get under the floor, jump on this, and then it was room with a wave and a wave, and then you were out, and there was a room with a wave and a wave. I would really like them to make it more like classic Doom, with better pacing across its levels to sit in a room and do circuits around a room while you're killing stuff as they're spawning in until the last wave and then you proceed and then there's not much in your quarters and everything I, I hope they vary that just a little bit oh by the way yeah quake one two and three hexen heretic <laughs> i played them all way back when and hopefully Doom Eternal will change that. That not that Doom 2016 is bad. Oh, and the Wolfenstein games can't forget those. Um, yeah, just change that formula up slightly, and we'll be good to go. So I mentioned Amazing Games Done Quick. Amazing Games Done Quick goes in the winter, and then you have the version that occurs in the summer. They occur about six months apart. They raise money for charities like Prevent Cancer and Doctors Without Borders. Definitely check them out. It is a week of speedrunning games from Mega Man and Super Mario all the way up to like Doom 2016 Control, which just came out. You'll probably see a Jedi Order in there, maybe even a Death Stranding show up in the summer. Um, they're really great. They are a lot of fun to watch. Sometimes games you want are at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, which suck. But they raised over $3 million, um, that just ended basically the day before I'm doing this recording. So give them a shot if you have any nostalgia for old video games. Like there was a Ninja Gate N2 from the NES done. Unfortunately, I missed it. But that's those are ones that I would like to see. Um, Mega Man is always run, Metroid games are always run, Zelda games in their many forms are always run, and they actually ended this particular session on a randomized Super Metroid, and I think Super Metroid is, is one of the greatest games of, of all time. Uh, they will throw in some Final Fantasies, they had a Final Fantasy VIII in this one, they've done Chrono Trigger in the past, so... Um, wait for the summer ones and catch them if you can. That's why this video has been so delayed is that I was busy for literally an entire week watching those. So moving on, Deathloop. So this one is going to be a bit interesting. I guess you could say this is going to be like Happy Death Day or Groundhog Day. It is a game similar to those movies where you just are in a loop trying to figure something out uh this one i encourage you to do a little bit of work in researching what it's been about we saw it at e3 um unfortunately this could be another bethesda one so we will wait and see how they they fuck it up but um 
From the team at Arcane Lion comes an innovative task on the first person action death loop transports players to the lawless island of Black Reef in an eternal struggle between two extraordinary assassins. So this is one that could definitely be on the radar. <laughs> one that we're, we know 100% is on everybody's radar doesn't even need to be mentioned is cyberpunk 2077 um we're expecting this one again relatively april doom and cyberpunk and final fantasy 7 are all occurring occurring earlier in the year this is one that i'm looking forward to cd project red typically does very well for themselves uh the witcher series of course is great rabid fan base for that and a fan base that is expanding thanks to the witcher hitting netflix which is really good i don't think there's somebody who can pick up the witcher on netflix and not find something that they enjoy there is action there is humor um there is the sword and sorcery bent to it there is if you're into that there is henry cavill and there is also if you are into it lots of boobs in there so netflix has a big hit on their hands when it comes to the witcher series the timing is perfect because if they expand the witcher universe they're expanding a cd project red universe of fans basically and then that could put them in contact with cyberpunk and if somebody's like oh this Witcher series is cool, let me play the game. And they're like, oh, this Witcher game is cool, let me see what else CD Projekt Red does. Boom. Skids are greased right into Cyberpunk 2077. So I think right now, despite their minor controversies, here's a trans person selling cola in the game, or Coke, or beer, or whatever it is they're selling. Aside from those controversies, I think CD Projekt Red will do well. They've been notorious for bad crunch in the press, and crunch has been a hit thing in 2019 to rally against, and has gone very, very public. So hopefully they kind of chill out on that a little bit, and they don't get bad press for that. But Cyberpunk 2077 should very well be a hit, and of course, you know, Keanu Reeves. What can we say about that? Here's an odd one to mention on this list, but there is going to be a Blair Witch game coming up probably in 2020. If it's not out already, I don't... Oh, it is out. Actually, I think it is out already. Uh, yeah, I take that back. This one is actually out. I thought this was one that was still coming. Surprisingly, it has very positive and mostly positive reviews on Steam. I may want to check that one out. The Blair Witch, it's a hard thing to talk about now, same way Sixth Sense is. But Blair Witch was a cultural phenomenon back in the 90s. It's easy to forget that they had a whole... In the early days of the web, they had this very interesting... Um, web PR going uh, interesting websites to draw you into it and then of course the movie released and it, it sort of became the took a knee uh, you know took an arrow to the knee of the time Blair Witch has not always fared well after that first one but the first movie certainly stands apart as shocking people when it happened much the way six Sense did now you know everybody waits for the twist so it's a little bit harder to pull off but blair witch could be uh, a fun game for the last trailer that i'm going to mention here oblade 2 senua saga trailer it, it not much more than two or three days go by before I have to watch this trailer again because this is an amazing trailer and I think this will be a fun game. It'll be interesting to see what they do with it because in the first one it was about a journey into madness and having psychological distress and mental diseases basically. How that wraps into two where it almost seems like she is a leader 
and has a maybe perhaps a cult behind her or something like that and that amazing war paint that mountain that comes alive this is a killer killer trailer and for somebody who owns hellblade but hasn't played it yet that trailer makes me want to get off my ass and do it um just to be ready for when this one when it drops because this is another one that that trailer alone has probably talked me into <laughs> into getting it up next uh halo infinite that one's going to be really interesting especially if it goes back to the roots of the halo series uh i did one and then skipped a bunch and came back to it for odst and reach and then did the master chief collection back when it resurfaced where you could play halo one and toggle on the old graphics and old graphics loved halo one story i was a competitive halo player on the pc for the clan that i'm still part of um the guild within that clan the guild that plays world of warcraft we officially turned 15 this month as a matter of fact just a couple days ago we turned 15 and the clan itself is nearly about 20 years old at this point and uh i enjoyed my time playing halo 1 competitively on the pc so i'm minorly rooted in the halo universe not not a super fanboy about it but enough to say that halo infinite will be fun when it releases and if it's the choice of PC or consoles, I, I would probably stick to the console on that one. Borderlands 3 was my first PC Borderlands. I'd always done it on the console. I'm actually still playing it with a uh, with a pad rather than mouse and keyboard just because I'm used to it. And I would probably want to do the same for Halo. Another funny one that we're going to be looking at in 2020 is this game called Bleeding Edge. It's by Ninja Theory, which is, of course, Hellblade that we were just talking about. Um, this one could be fun. It's a multiplayer combat video game. We don't really know that much about it quite yet. There was a small trailer about it. Diverse cast of characters. It looks like it's going to be March 24th. There have been some betas, and I think there will be another one maybe in a an arena shooter or a hero shooter it, it could be interesting i have to do a little more research on this one um up here are some related games i can tell you wasteland 3 i'm not necessarily looking forward to it because i just played a little bit of the first wastelands or the second one on my steam i own them because to me it's it's again it's a lot of a roots thing Wasteland was developed by ECA, now known as EA. Back then, Electronic Arts was ECA. And you had people like Brian Fargo doing the Wasteland series and the Bard's Tale series. Some of the most critical and pivotal RPGs for me going back in the day. So my early RPGs on the Commodore were Ultima 2. Ultima, so I did three first. Actually, Ultima 3 with Origin. Then I went back and beat Ultima 2 with Sierra. And then Ultima 4 and 5 on Origin. Wasn't that crazy about 6? That's when the Ultima series lost me was 6. Because they went for an IBM PC aesthetic instead of Commodore. But over on the ECA side, I like Bard's Tale 1, 2, and 3. And Wasteland. You might know Wasteland as the series that gave rise to the Fallout universe. If we didn't have Wasteland back on the Commodore, we wouldn't have had the Fallout games. They exist in the same universe. So I tried to go back to my roots and my party died super quickly in, in Wasteland 2. So I was kind of like, eh, not crazy about this. Ori and the Will of the Wisps, I might try because it's a Metroidvania and it looked very, very pretty in its presentation. But that one's sort of a backseat one. Seeing over here, Marvel's Avengers, this is definitely something I'm looking forward to. This is another one that's going to drop early in the year. It's going to be two days before my birthday. It's May 15th. I'm very torn about this one. And the reason why I'm torn is I want to get it early to get in the beta to do videos for you guys. 
but this is a risky risky purchase for what we know of it at the time because i mean look when it dropped black widow i mean okay so everybody's nickname was bulk with deuce banner uh, blork widow Steve, which was a you know steve rogers i call him tactical dad bod um don't stand which is iron man and i call thor hubcaps because his chest plate plates dinner plates over there look like they come from a night late 1970s mercury maverick or ford comet and black widow i mean look at those that is a duke nukem face on there it's getting better i follow them on twitter they've been releasing new footage black widow doesn't look like the movie white chicks anymore or have a duke nukem jaw chin it's getting better but the reaction to squares avengers footage at e3 was mild at best i'm not saying it's as bad as the people waiting to hear half-life 3 and it was a dota card game was like oh but it wasn't good hopefully things will get better i mean i think hulk is the truest looking character to the mcu and this isn't going to take place in the mcu but the mcu has based on tried and true representations of these marvel characters Square needs to recognize that and say, okay, if you want to do something different, fine. Do it in the plot, but don't change the aesthetics of these characters that much. If you do, you will alienate the fans who may want to get this game. If we can do what we did for the Sonic movie, hopefully we could do the same thing for the Avengers game. So this one, I'm very much on the fence about. I think I will probably pre-order it so I can get into the beta, but it's risky. This might be throwing $60 at a moving car at 120 miles an hour on the freeway going over a bridge of a toxic swamp. Um, Ghosts of Tsushima. So this is another fun one. There were like three asian related souls borns game that have been on my radar for a while ghost of tushima was one of them sakira was another and neo 2 was another tushima is one that i think both my girlfriend and i share a bit of interest in and want to check it out when it pops up i am the only one who has a little bit of interest in neo 2 she didn't do the first one uh, I did. I got up to Ice Chick and then abandoned it because she was kicking my ass. But Ghosts of Tsushima should be cool. And I think if I remember correctly, this was the somewhat controversial presentation where they had a white guy playing an Asian flute on stage. And everybody's like, oh, you whitewashed it. Couldn't you get an Asian to do it? And this guy was literally a master of the instrument. Shut up, people. <laughs> like, let's not squabble over the stupid things, but this one uh could be a lot of fun another one could be godfall so godfall this is one i'm minorly watching we may not really get this one in 2020 it's gonna be close um they're, they're calling it a looter slasher it's gonna be co-op high impact combat this is one that could be uh, a little bit interesting there is also another one with a link aesthetic let me see New games of that also mentions gods in it and it has a kind of gods and monsters yeah this is the one that has a breath of the wild look to it it's gonna be on several platforms they're saying it's gonna be in february it's not one that I'm itching to buy, but it's one that I'm going to check out the reviews on when it comes out. I've been informed that when it comes to the Switch, the moment Animal Crossing comes out on the Switch, I'm apparently never going to see this again. I have uh, been told that my hands will be dipped in boiling acid by the girlfriend if I go anywhere near the Switch once Animal Crossing comes out. But she's going to have her hands full playing... Uh, 
Pokemon Shield most likely and apparently now there's going to be a DLC for Sword and Shield which is likely uh, Game Freak's way of appeasing the, the, uh, the masses when it comes to this because it released with nowhere near the amount of Pokemon that people hoped and they believe that the game was getting delayed to increase the Pokedex and everything and then they came out with this quote unquote amazing graphics and everybody's like well where's the Pokemon that's why it was delayed right I'm like nope um that Pokemon's missing well the DLC might fix that finally the last two things we're going to talk about and uh wrap up the, the video over here is Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 is going to have a DLC this year that one could be interesting. I played through the original plot of MOA 3 and I'm happy with it. And now there are some DLCs that increase your roster a little bit, but they didn't give you a story per se. They gave you this gauntlet and the danger room stuff and everything. I would like them to have a new addition to the plot, new levels to go through. And hopefully they learn from the complaints. And the complaints are that the camera is astastic. You know, I watched more Jim Sterling videos in 2019 than I ever had. And there were some things that I really disagreed highly with him. Um, one of them, I don't remember if it was Kiro. But one of them literally was a matter of get good. Like he very much disliked a very good game because he sucked at it. And he didn't go very far. And my response is kind of was like, get good. Because once you get past this initial part, oh, Remnant. That's what it was. He was awful at Remnant. And he was like, oh, everything is so samey and everything looks the same. Because he was in a world. That's what that world looked like. If he had actually managed to get past the first world, it would have been completely different. His criticisms of Mua 3 were good. And it took a while for me to realize that he was very much right on that. The camera is just total dick in Mua 3. It fights you. It's hard to see where you are sometimes. Enemies need a little bit of posture that if you're wailing on them, they can't just flick their thumb and send you across the room for half of your health. If their DLCs can add story content and fix some of the stuff... I would be excited to play more of the DLCs. I have the season pass, so I'm getting it regardless. But finally, the last thing that we want to talk about, Marvel Avengers Alliance Redux. So this, of course, is a big thing for people on the channel. Um, I have been very much in touch with Goofy over the past few weeks. I know what he's up to. We should be looking at a new beta very soon. Um... This will essentially be beta 3, so we went from alpha 5 to beta 1 and 2 in somewhat quick succession. We're now going to look at beta 3 coming out. My big thing is I want to see it get to a point where it's really stable and progressing through the missions will be worth it. I'm not exactly going to spend a lot of time playing it outside of my videos until I know progress isn't going to get wiped i can get drops that i want to farm for i can begin to rebuild the empire that was me from 2012 to 2016 so i'm excited for it to get to a point where it is stable and i hope within 2020 we come alpha come out of alphas and betas and we come to a release candidate and there will be no single greater moment in 2020 for me than when I can finally do a video on the release candidate and all these people who are saying they're holding off, they're waiting, the betas look good but maybe it doesn't run well on their machines. Those, are, That's when I know I get to loop you people in on this and that's what will make my 2020. When I can restart that journey all over again that started back in... 2012 and they didn't really even know any better you know back then it was a facebook game it was marvel it was a tie-in to the movies the movies hadn't set their cultural trends yet 
I, I'm also super excited for what the writing team is making for you guys. Uh, there is there is a flood. There is a literal Hoover Dam floodgate that is just waiting for this game to go into release mode, and then it's going to come pouring out down the valley at 2,000 miles, and it's going to be terminal velocity as it comes down the pipe over here, and we just we're waiting for the stability in the code. We need to get animators and artists in there because we can invent every character under the sun in the Marvel Universe. We can script them, we can write them, we can keep the tone the same from chapter to spec ops to covert ops to one shots to PvP, all of it. But we need people who can work the sprites and get non-janky combat animation so that we produce a quality product and we need artists and everything so um, I'm very excited for 2020 and that there's a lot of great games and the first half of the year is going to have a lot of good ones but I definitely hope by the third quarter or fourth quarter we have a very working Marvel Avengers Alliance redux for you guys and that is one of the things that I'm looking forward to more than any of the other stuff I've talked about here. So that's it, guys. That's what I'm looking forward to in 2020. Of course, some new content. Marvel Strike Force will be nice. DC Legends, whatever. I'm kind of hoping the Looney Tunes World of Mayhem game dies. Everybody on Reddit is predicting that it's on its way out. I want it sort of out of my life at this point. It is a time-consuming game to do dailies. And if everybody's believing it's going to die, I just want it to die already so i can uninstall it uh i just removed marvel battle lines a day ago day or two ago i didn't get to do the final video that i wanted to do because it was suddenly january 9th i was like oh shit i gotta do it and then they were gone there was a wonderful little card series that i wanted to show you guys similar to like a you know a two or three drop hearthstone or magic the gathering run um there was a beautiful combo that i invented that i wished i could have shown people but the game ended too quickly so my bad on that one we'll see a couple other games die in in 2020 we know but uh hopefully no more big ones so that's it for me guys hope you enjoyed the video happy new year everybody and hopefully I'll be seeing you guys again within about a week or so for a new Marvel Avengers Alliance Redux beta version. Peace out, everybody.